Daniela, can you explain to me in 30 seconds or less what you do to somebody that's stupid like me? Now, I know it has something to do with math and DNA and medicine. Right. So, you know, in the last 10 years, all of these technologies have been developed in biology that make it possible for us to really understand on a deep level what our cells are doing. And the question is, can we translate the data that we can now collect on a cellular level into useful clinical information that we can use to treat disease, to uh, predict patient outcomes, and to do other really potentially useful things. So the question is, can we develop statistical methods in order to translate this data into useful knowledge that can have practical? And when you're talking data, we're talking about the human DNA, right? Yeah, so one example of data is the human genome, um, right. where we can now sequence an entire individual's DNA. But there's a lot of other types of data, too, that we might be interested in. And these data types really share the characteristic that they're incredibly massive. Uh, we might um, measure 3 million measurements or 30,000 measurements for a single individual. And it's really just a huge amount of data that, that on, honestly the world hadn't seen before 10 years ago. So in my, in my DNA, so we have base pairs that are matched up, right? Mm -hmm. uh, how many base pairs are in mine? Or is it the same for everybody? It's the same for everyone. <laughs> and it's, you know, for you it's pretty similar to like a chimpanzee also and, oh. and that type of thing. <laughs> but it's, but how, how long are we talking? To, you know, everybody hears about sequencing yeah. uh, the, you know, DNA and the, it's coming cheaper and people are, right. you know, 23 and me and all this sort of stuff, right? Right. It, so, you know, traditionally people would, um, the the technology that was in use five years ago would involve measuring like half a million base pairs because that was the number of base pairs in which there's really a lot of variation in the human population. But, so you um, don't measure the whole thing, they just measure the bits that, that change. That's right. Well, more recently people have actually started measuring the whole thing because there are new technologies that actually make it fast and cheap to literally measure the entire thing, to sequence an individual's DNA instead of just measuring the bits and pieces that they could. And this is amazing because when the human genome was first sequenced, that was a huge endeavor right. that took an incredible amount of work. And well, now then there was that one guy who kind of skipped ahead, right? <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> um, but, but, you know, now these, these same things are possible on a much faster and cheaper scale for an individual. So how is all this stuff going to sort of change my life? I mean, if I get sick, if I, right. God forbid, you know, the big cancer word or something like that, yeah. and this happens in 20 years, what you're doing now is going to save me, right? Yeah, that's right. That's the, <laughs> that's the hope. Well, the idea is right now there's a lot of diseases that we know on a molecular level are different. We know that not all breast cancers are the same, for instance, but a lot of these diseases are really treated pretty similar in two different patients, even though on a molecular level these patients' diseases might be different. And so the question is, can we really target therapy on mm -hmm. the basis of this large-scale data in order to give each person the treatment that they're going to respond best to? That, that, that's pretty amazing stuff, actually. Um, so let's talk about success for a minute and what, what, what that means. So you're part of our glamorous and wonderful 30 Under 30, which is, which is a fantastic group. Um, uh, you've had a, a pretty stellar academic career, and you're off doing some amazing um, research. Now, do you feel like you've made it or are you just starting out or are you going to go on to do what? Well, it's a long road. I hope that I haven't made it yet because there's a lots of questions I want to answer. Otherwise it would be boring, right? That's right. Uh, yeah. I mean, I've got a I've got a career ahead of me, right. so you know, there's there's always more problems to answer and more um, more areas to become an expert in. And what's fun about the research that I do actually is that the skills that I have as a statistician are really broad. So they can be applied to like studying and better understanding cancer or they can be applied to, to high tech and understanding right. data from the internet and stuff like that. So there's always more paths ahead. Last question, um, are you thinking at any point about starting your own company? You know, this is Forbes, we like the entrepreneurial spirit here. Well, I'm a statistician, which means that I'm paid to be a skeptic. And, um, <laughs> you know, so... I'm and most started, startups fail. That's is true. Is that what you're trying to say in a nice way? <laughs> well, also, you know, I wouldn't want to start something unless I'm really sure that the data is there. Right. And, um, and you know, that's something that it'll take years. Uh, you know, the science has to progress and we really have to get to the point where we can reliably make inference and learn things on the basis of these large data sets. So you don't go to Vegas but, much? No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you.